let's make the Netflix animation in Resolve. For reference, my timeline is set to 24 FPS. Create a fusion composition. The Netflix animation is 4 seconds in length. So trim your composition to 4 seconds and click the Fusion tab. Drag in the original animation for reference. Click 1 to add it to the left monitor. When animating, it's always helpful to think in terms of basic shapes. We'll create the end using 3 rectangles. Back in Fusion, add a background node and a rectangular mask. Set the width to 1 and the height to 0.33. This will be one of the strokes of the N. You can rename nodes by pressing the F2 key. Call this the center rectangle. Create two more rectangles. Call them the top rectangle and the bottom rectangle. Name the background nodes appropriately for clarity. Merge all three background nodes using two merge nodes and connect the output of merge 2 to media out. Click 2 on media out to see the rectangles on the right monitor. With the top rectangle selected, adjust its center Y to 0.833. With the bottom rectangle selected, adjust its center Y to 0.167. You should now see three rectangles covering the entire viewport. These three rectangles are the three strokes of the end. We now need to skew the center rectangle to form the diagonal of the N. With the center rectangle node selected, hit shift space bar and import the corner positioner node. By default, the rectangle will be connected to the corner positioner as a mask. Change this so that the rectangle is connected to the yellow input of the corner positioner. Ensure the mapping type is set to perspective. Adjust the top left, bottom left, top right and bottom right points to align with the top and bottom rectangles. The values to use are shown on screen. When set up correctly, you should see a N that is rotated 90 degrees. Select the top and bottom rectangles and choose a slightly darker shade of red. I am using this color. The center rectangles should appear above the two corner rectangles. If you see the center rectangle under a corner rectangle, adjust the foreground and background connectors for the relevant merge nodes as shown here. Ok, that's better. Now, let's add a drop shadow for the center rectangle. With the background node of the center rectangle selected, press shift space bar and import a drop shadow node. Leave the drop shadow node at its default values. Alright, that now looks good. Next, we'll work on animating the N. Looking at the reference, the left stroke of the N animates in over 4 frames. The center stroke animates in over 4 frames and the right stroke animates in over 5 frames. With the bottom background node selected, hit shift space bar to import the dissolved node. The background node is connected to the dissolved node with the yellow input. In the inspector, set the operation to SMPTE wipe. Add another background node and connect the bottom rectangle as a mask to this new node. Add this new background node to the green input of the dissolved node. Change the background color of this new background node to black. Adjust the keyframe of the background foreground slider to animate the red color in over 4 frames. Adjust the softness slider to your preference. The animation is so short that the softness won't be obvious here, but it might be helpful in other animations. You can also set the background nodes alpha to transparent if you prefer. Let's repeat this for other two rectangles. If the direction of the wipe is incorrect, you can change the direction of the wipe using the invert wipe option in the inspector. If you are facing issues, check that the dissolved nodes are connected to the correct inputs of the merge nodes. They should only be connected to either the foreground or background connectors of the merge nodes. Looking back at the reference, you'll notice that the bottom of the end is not flat. Let's work on that next. We can achieve this using a circular mask. With merge 2 selected, hit shift space bar and import the matte control node. 
add an ellipse to the garbage mat input of the mat control node. Set the height and the width of the ellipse to 4.0 and adjust the center X of the ellipse such that it just clips the edge of the frame as shown here. Now let's go to the edit page to see what we have done so far. Rotate the clip 270 degrees and set the zoom level to 0.19. So here's what we have. Next, let's work on the lines that start showing up at around 2 seconds. Anytime you need to generate random things, always think of the fast noise node. So hit shift spacebar and import the fast noise node. We'll work on the top rectangle first. The steps are the same for the remaining two rectangles. Connect the top rectangle node to this new fast noise node as a mask. Import a new merge node. Connect the fast noise node as the foreground of this merge node and the dissolve output as the background for this node. The output of this node should be connected to where the dissolved node was originally connected to. Now the fast noise looks cloudy and not quite what we want, but we'll fix it. Select the fast noise node and in the inspector, increase the detail slider to 10 and adjust the brightness and contrast to taste. Unselect the lock XY toggle and make the X scale 0 and the Y scale 16. This is a secret sauce to creating lines instead of clouds. Select the discontinuous toggle and adjust the seethe and seethe rate to a number that looks good to you. Since the noise pattern should only start at the 41st frame, set the global in out to start at the 41st frame. This will ensure that the fast noise pattern is not displayed before the 41st frame. Repeat this for the center rectangle and the bottom rectangle. You'll want to adjust the seethe and the seethe rate settings for the three fast noise nodes so that they are different. You'll also want to adjust the angle of the center rectangle to align with the angle of the stroke. Also, adjust the global in-out settings for the other two fast noise nodes as well. My settings are on screen. You can play with the colors of the noise in the color tab. Adjust the alpha of the color to 1 to make the strokes darker. The N starts animating out at the 46th frame. We can use the same dissolved nodes that we used to animate the N in to animate it out. Using the reference as a guide, set keyframes on the top rectangle and the center rectangle's dissolved nodes. Remember that the bottom rectangle does not animate out. I am using an underlay tool to group the nodes for easy organization. Select the nodes that you want to group together, click shift spacebar and choose the underlay tool. These nodes will now be grouped and displayed in an underlay. This step is optional. Next, let's work on the colorful lines that show up towards the end of the animation. To highlight what's going on, let's disconnect the media out node just to focus on these lines for a bit. If you like this video so far, please hit the like button and subscribe. It'll mean a lot to me. Thanks. Remember when I said, if you want random things to happen, think of the fast noise node. So that's what we'll do here. Add a fast noise node and connect it to the media out. With fast noise selected, in the inspector, increase the detail to 10 and the contrast to 3.3. Decrease the brightness to minus 0.33. Disable the lock XY and decrease the X scale to 0 and increase the Y scale to 20. Adjust the seed and the seed rate to your liking. This determines how many lines you see and how often these lines appear. In the inspector, click on the color tab. Select the type as gradient and choose the gradient type to be uni. In the gradient color slider, choose the white color and change the color to red. So the gradient should go from black to red. Change the repeat value to repeat and select the sub pixel to 5 by 5. Play with the offset to adjust how often the blacks and the reds appear. In the gradient color slider, move the black point higher up if you feel that there's too much red on screen. This is up to your preference. I move it way high so that the screen isn't overwhelmed with red. The original Netflix animation has red, yellow, green, pink and blue lines. Duplicate the fast noise node for how many ever colors you want. Connect these fast noise nodes using merge nodes. In each of the merge nodes, set the apply mode to screen.
If you don't see too many colors showing, you'll need to adjust the offset of each of those nodes. If you don't do this, the colors will overlap and it'll look weird. Let's add all these nodes back to the original set of nodes we created. Since we only want these lines to appear on the bottom rectangle, connect the output of Merge 5 as mask inputs of all four fast noise nodes. Then use a Merge node to connect the outputs of the Mat Control node and Merge 8. Merge 8 should connect to the green input, which is the foreground, and the Mat Control should connect to the yellow input, which is the background. Since we want the red color to fade into the lines, select the last Merge node and add keyframes to the blend slider to fade from the red color to these lines over a few frames. Use the original animation as reference for when the fade should start and when it should end. Go back to the edit page to see what we've done so far. We have the animation, but we don't have the end zooming in yet. Add the original video above our animation and reduce its opacity to 50% so that you can see both the layers at the same time. Use keyframes on the zoom and position sliders and match the zoom speed of the original animation. You'll also notice that in the original clip, the lines have a slight glow to them, which our lines don't. Let's add that now. With Merge 8 selected, press Shift Spacebar to add a Gaussian Blur node. Adjust the strength of the Gaussian Blur to your preference. Now with the Gaussian Blur node selected, click Shift Spacebar to add a Glow node. Adjust the Glow slider to your preference. And that's it. Now you know how to make a Netflix logo. Pat yourself on the back, go get some ice cream and click like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.